In breeder reactor development, proof of breeding and the first generation of electricity using nuclear power was achieved with EBR-1 in the 1950s. In the 60s, EBR-2 was built, incorporating a closed fuel cycle. The reprocessing and refabrication of highly radioactive fuel were all handled remotely. During four years of operation, more than five complete reactor cores were fabricated. This experience clearly established that a remotely operated reactor fuel cycle can be successfully engineered and operated. The further extension of this concept was not possible with the technology of that time. It is now. Technological advances in the past few years make all the pieces fit together to make a complete breeder system. The Integral Fast Reactor, IFR. Advances that make IFR possible are a greatly improved metal fuel burn-up capability, up by a factor of five or more, plus improvements in metal fuel reprocessing that allows complete recovery and recycle of the fuel and allows the removal of important fission products untouched in the earlier process. Low burn-up limits of 2% have been resolved by understanding the swelling phenomenon of metal fuels. As the fuel is utilized, fission gases are trapped in the fuel. This causes it to swell, putting a high stress on the cladding. Increasing the length of the fuel element's cladding jacket enlarges the upper gas space. And by reducing the fuel pin diameter, additional clearance is provided inside the fuel element. The fuel concentration in the pin is increased to compensate for the smaller diameter. Now, by the time the swelling has reached the wall, the fuel is so spongy that further outward swelling is easily restrained by the cladding. High burn-up relies on adequate clearance. With metal fuels, the densities are high enough that the clearance can be provided, and its nuclear performance surpasses that of ceramic fuel. Thousands of fuel elements irradiated in EBR-2 have been routinely discharged at 8.5% burn-up. Many have exceeded 10%, and a few have attained 18.5% burn-up. New Mark IIa elements are expected to reach an average of 14%. To achieve a high fuel melting point, alternative fuel alloys have been irradiated in EBR-2. The most promising is a uranium-plutonium-zirconium alloy. Along with improvements in reactor fuel performance is the utilization of a two-step pyrochemical reprocessing operation. Process steps that could fit into the system that was used at EBR-2. Spent subassemblies were removed from the reactor, then transferred to the fuel cycle facility. During transport, adhering sodium was removed by the addition of moist air, changing sodium to sodium oxide, then sodium hydroxide, and finally washing it off. The sub-assemblies were disassembled mechanically to remove the stainless steel shroud, end pieces, and other hardware. Blanket fuel was declad and core fuel chopped into convenient sized pieces. The first step in the pyrochemical process is halide slagging. A salt is added to a crucible containing chopped core or blanket fuel, then heated to 1300 degrees centigrade. The chemical reaction between the molten fuel alloy and fused halide salt is such that many fission products from the fuel alloy are transferred to the salt bath. When the process is complete, the salt containing the fission products becomes a waste stream. And the fuel alloy, 
is transferred to the second major process step, electro-refining. In this fuel purification step, a molten salt is used as the electrolyte. The crucible is the anode, and a rod immersed in the molten salt is the cathode. Deposits of uranium or uranium-plutonium from the core or blanket feed collect on the cathode. Again, the residue remaining is a waste stream. The purified product of electro-refining is cast into ingots of metal. The composition of the core fuel ingot is tested and adjusted to the desired level using plutonium and uranium obtained from the blanket. The ingots are passed to the fuel pin fabrication operations. While this product is acceptable for reactor use, it is still highly radioactive and intolerable to human beings, one very effective protection against diversion. The fabrication of metallic fuel proposed for the IFR is essentially identical to those steps developed and used at the EBR2 fuel cycle facility. Fuel pins can be fabricated by injection casting, a hundred or so pins cast at a time. clipped to length, then slipped into the clad with a small amount of sodium. Heating and vibrating gives a continuous layer of sodium between the pin and cladding. This provides a thermal bond between the fuel pin and cladding. Then, the sub-assemblies are assembled remotely for return to the reactor. While solving the burn-up problems that blocked earlier development of metal fuels and providing advances in reprocessing are among key factors in the IFR concept, there are several other characteristics to be considered. One feature of inherent safety is the large liquid sodium pool the reactor is immersed in. It provides an enormous heat sink, which makes the primary reactor system invulnerable to possible failure in the rest of the plant. By incorporating hot fuel processing and fabrication, there's the elimination of off-site fuel shipments. All fuel materials are retained on site. It also minimizes even out-of-reactor fuel inventories. Only plutonium produced in the blanket is used to replace fuel consumed in reactor operation. Consequently, no plutonium enters or leaves the reactor plant. There are two small high-level waste streams, one to be converted directly to a solid glass-like product, the other encapsulated in an inert solid, both stored on site for the life of the plant. Simply nothing goes into the plant but the clean initial core and ordinary uranium, and nothing comes out but electricity. This concept is also applicable to a range of plant sizes. This allows for power parks scaled to electrical needs. The scientific and technical capabilities exist, and the full range of experimental facilities are already in place to provide a full-scale demonstration of the integral fast reactor concept. <laughs>